Hi everyone, it's Brad back for just two minutes here. So I just finished test driving the old 2004 F-150 and it runs beautiful now. So uh, obviously these VVT solenoids, actuators, whatever you'd like to call them, pretty crucial to the Triton 5.4 V8. I just want to show you a picture of the old truck or a view of the old truck just to show you why I even bother. So this was... Uh, this truck was bought for 2000 uh, due to problems with the variable valve timing, which I resolved myself initially. And then, so we had this little problem three years later after putting 50,000 kilometers on it. Anyway, $2,000 pickup. Here you go. So it's an 04. Apparently the last year that they kept the front end somewhat level on these trucks and then they started dropping the front end down on them after um i think it came originally with 18 inch wheels and then this has 20s on it now like not just these wheels but our winter wheels are ford 20 inch wheel i don't think they even came with them in 2004 but it's got a ton of options it's got the keyless entries it's got the power pedals Power sunroof, power back window, um, well, every other interior option, like, you know, and uh, power everything, and including the seats and all that, and uh, shit, man, the thing, I put I put one, one A-arm assembly on this side or whatever, because the ball joint was worn out, and uh, other than that, man, $2,000. I put a new front bumper on here because the other one had a lot of big blisters and rust. And I did a home paint job on this. And that's standing up great. Swapped the headlights. The guy had given me those initial, you know, brand new with the truck. Oh, no, brand new. They were brand new in a box. And he gave them to me with the truck. And uh, all this stuff. Interior's dirty, but hey, I'll give you a quick little shot it's just uh, just a black truck with you know leather interior a little bit of whatever carbon fiber I don't know if you can even see it carbon fiber type stuff going on here and there whatever decent decent everything doors nice big back seat and all that anyway yeah Comments on the $2,000 truck. <laughs> Everybody can have one if you're willing to spend some time and effort on things. That's all I'm saying. So, thanks for watching. Hope everyone stays safe. Good day, everyone. It's Brad at my way. Hey, I'm going to do a little video today. Uh, it's been a while been quite a while actually but uh, just busy doing so many different things but today I got to work on our F-150 um, I guess I need a VVT solenoid getting a code 19 the truck started running roughly sputtering a bit coming up the hills and that's about it but not running great and when I had a look at the truck I found oil coming out of the electrical terminal of the VBT solenoid and so I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what has to go on to get that done it's kind of a nightmare but um, I'll show you the beginning anyway okay here we go okay so uh, this is the top of our engine um, right now what I'm doing is I've got a I'm a refrigeration guy so I've got my my reclaiming setup, my gauges, and my reclaimer going here, and I'm actually re reclaiming the 134A out of my system because in order to get this valve cover off, I've got to remove that refrigerant fitting that's attached to the suction accumulator um, for my suction line running over to the compressor here. So I got to remove that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much gonna try and focus um, right now I'm disconnecting my battery power I've got to remove all three of these cables from the ECM I've got to remove the ECM off the firewall 
get this hose and everything up and out of the way here. Got to disconnect all of the the coils here. Pull them up and get them up top out of the way. I'm not going to uh, not going to remove any of the the top gear here because I am just focusing strictly on getting this valve cover off and my VVT solenoid is located right here and I don't know why Ford didn't make some way to change this component without removing that valve cover um, but that valve cover has to come off and it's not really a fun job um, the last job I did on this motor I, I had the front of the motor I had rad shroud fan water pump everything off the front of the motor uh, put new timing chains guides uh, cam phasers um, cam position sensors in the front and new spark plugs you know simple things but I did not do the VVT solenoids now if I was doing this again knowing what I know been told it's common part to fail one of the most common I probably would have uh, done something different None. okay everybody I'm back just still working on the F-150 here made a little bit of progress I just wanted you to see where we're going to get out this uh, passenger side valve cover. So I finished removing my refrigerant. Um, but now the refrigerant is stored in the tank here. I used my reclaiming machine. I brought that into vacuum because you have to bring it into around 15 inches of vacuum to make sure you have all the refrigerant out. Then I brought my pressure back up above zero with nitrogen to prevent the system basically from inhaling any moist air or air period when I go to uh, disconnect my refrigerant line down here. Okay, so I took the battery cover off. Gave me two, three, two inches there. Um, I've disconnected my uh, ground, so my uh, negative cable and my uh, ground lead. Um, disconnected from battery and the ground lead from the firewall and I've pulled that stuff forward to get that out of my way um, I removed the uh, oil fill spout there out of the valve cover um, disconnected my wiring uh, to the VVT solenoid itself um, disconnected the uh, we'll call it the PCV hose here that goes up to the air breather uh, tied that water hose back so that's out of my way so I've got to go ahead now and get this uh, ECM off the firewall put that out of my way and try and get this wiring sort of up into that empty space so that I can get the back of the valve cover out back there uh, that'll be after removing the ignition coils from the plugs here get those out of my way Haul them up as far as I can get them. Yep, so we're progressing along. Talk to you shortly. Okay, hi guys. Um, about 15 minutes later, we're getting down to it. You can see I actually can uh, visualize the valve cover coming off of there now. You know, we're getting down to where we can get at the bolts. I mean, it's still... Uh, they bury that valve cover way back, you know, like it's very difficult getting in at all the bolts on these uh, Triton 5.4 Ford motors. Um, lots of people don't like to work on them. But since you got a little bit of stuff going on here, the, the ECM and the, the filler tube and the ECM mounting and the battery cover and the ignition coils. Tied the AC line back all the way, um, ignition coils, and then brought all the wire up out of the way, battery cables back out of the way, uh, 
ECM, all, all the wiring for the truck. Uh, some of it's got to go one direction up on the top over here to get out of the way. Uh, that's to allow space under here where you're probably not going to be able to see, but the wiring was kind of wrapped around the back of the valve cover there, and you need to uh, give some free space there. So I've wrapped that one up over the top, and the other two are tucked over on this side. Anyway, so we're going to proceed at trying to get that valve cover off of there. And as I was saying, once I get it off, I'm pretty sure that's just a couple of minute job to change that VVT solenoid. So we'll be at it. Hi, gentlemen, I'm back. Um, we're almost there. I got all the valve cover bolts out of the 5.4 here. Um, before I open that up, I'm going to get in here and... Uh, use my air compressor and blow some of the little bit of debris and sand and whatever is piled up there. Yeah, just so we don't end up with anything down in the plug holes or in the valve cover, in the valve train, sorry, anywhere under the valve cover. Yeah, so that's all sealed up yet. And I'm just going to take a quick break for a bite to eat. Talk to you after a few minutes. Okay, bye for now. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, all the bolts are out, including back there. Uh, yeah, you're talking leaning right over the front of the motor here. And, uh, you know, you get a kneel up on here, chest and midsection right up on the, if you don't have a blanket or something, man, I'm telling you, it just kills my fancy blanket here. It's nice and soft. Yeah, anyway, my mom would recognize that one. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for hanging. So, 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 so. So we're in there. We're in there. Uh, this valve cover is a bugger to remove. Um, but we got the valve cover off. You can see all our spark plug holes. Plugs are down in there. I don't know why they did that, but that's how they're rolling. Um, quick inspection of everything looks great. Timing chains are not really nice and tight. The cam has some wear on it. Um, I'm going to say as much previous, more previous than since I've owned it. We switched it over to straight synthetic and not a regular change and I see it's gotten rid of some of the color inside of the cover there. Um, back when I first took it apart, we had quite a lot more color throughout, really. It was a bit darker, and not that it had been maintained poorly, just uh, yeah, synthetics clean things up. Anyway, uh, we're going to carry on and uh, get the valve cover back on here. Um, got a little cleaning to do. I'm working around in a mess here right now because I got part of the shop taken apart, which I could show you, but I'll clean this valve cover up in the, the rubber gasket here. Still plenty supple. Not damaged or anything, just needs a, a tidying up. So yeah. this is the part of the shop that I showed in a previous video and uh I uh, had done the plumbing and things like that. Oh, now I've got drywalls all up and I've had another fellow doing the mudding for me. And uh, it's kind of where we're at, pretty well finished. It's pretty well finished. I think he said, as a matter of fact, it was only a couple of spots that he did want to relook and a couple of spots to sand and pretty well done. Anyway, back to the 150. So, um, yeah, back to 150. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, so we're back with the 150. As you can see, I got everything all back in place. 
ignition wiring. All those things. Valve covers back on there with the new VVT solenoid. And everything's back in place. So the only thing we have left to do is to pressure test, evacuate, and charge the air conditioning unit. So I'm going to get on that here. Uh, going to grab a vacuum pump. Just hang on a minute. Okay, so got my nitrogen hooked up, my bottle open. So I'm going to pressure through the high side and watch the low side pressure rise, basically. Here we go. So I'm just going to probably go for a hundred. And then I'm going to listen. Okay, so you can see we're just over a hundred there. Um, I want to go higher than that. Just wanted to uh, be sure that um, before I go any further that we're not already leaking. So, everything seems to be sitting good there. So we're going to jack this up a little more. So we're going to go about 152 there. This way, we can monitor that and we'll see if or not we're leaking at all. Checking my hoses here, make sure they're tight. Everything seems good. Depending on the angle we look at it here, we're pretty much bang on 150, really. Maybe just 151 or two. So we're just going to hold there for a few and uh, I'll come back to you guys and show you the evacuation and charging. Okay, we'll talk to you in a little bit here. Bye. All right, as you can see, that's holding pressure just fine. Hasn't dropped a smidge. So I'm going to now uh, release the pressure from that system. So I'm going to close up my nitrogen here. And have this pressure turn on. Disconnect that, and then uh, I'm just gonna open up the valve here and purge out that nitrogen that we put in. Okay, and then. Uh, Next thing we're going to do is hook up this vacuum pump. And we're going to pull up the vacuum on this baby. Okay, so we get our process hose. A little hard to do this with one hand. We get our process hose. We're going to open up our port on the front of the pump here. Get this guy on there. Dropping stuff. Pulling it down. Doing all right. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Okay. Uh, let's get a hose. A hose. Let's get a cord going on here. mess going on. What we got. Okay. 
there we got a rack and pump plug in so we've already opened our gauge ports full on both so we're just going to turn this rack and pump on and we're going to let that pull inches of mercury vacuum right now we're at about 10 inches of mercury and we want to end up down near the 30 mark there it'll come down there takes a little bit Okay hey guys, so the project's complete. I got uh, the new VVT solenoid into the bank number two on the 2004 F-150 with great success. No more code, it's running smoothly and I got the air conditioner recharged. So I was just going to show you guys where I was at with that. Okay, so uh, refrigerant. 134A, that's the prescribed medicine for this old truck. And our refrigerant 134A gauge set with our quick release hoses there. I've already taken my discharge off actually. I should have left it on to show you guys the, the operating pressures, but uh, we were running a perfect 125 head pressure there when I had that on and uh, with the door open and the AC crank there we're running steady on about 27-28 PSI real nice cold air coming out of the unit inside yeah I'm happy with it uh, I'm not going to measure the air or anything like that because it is putting out well I'm an experienced technician I put the prescribed amount of refrigerant, which is uh, 34 ounces. In here, refrigerant 134, 134, uh, sorry, 34 ounces, two pounds, two ounces. So uh, we've used the refrigerant scale, weighed that in out of our 134A bottle, and uh, this is where we're at. So everything seems smooth. Everything seems smooth, so I'm going to call that a, a job done, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. So as usual, thumbs up, thanks for hanging out, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that, and uh, like and share my videos. Okay, you guys take it easy, bye. Hey guys, how's it going today? Hope everybody is doing good on Sunday. Anyway, back on the uh, 2004 F-150. Um, as you'll see in the video when we get there, I worked on bank one, which is passenger side, and replaced the uh, BVT solenoid valve in there. It was telling us we had an open circuit. Truck had been running okay, but uh, Anyway, that happened, so I took that cover and everything off again, as you'll see in the video coming up. And then we drove for about a week and a half, and all of a sudden the truck ran horribly. Didn't run so horribly before, but now it ran horribly. And it turns out that bank two, which is the driver's side, now has a similar error saying that the actuator circuit is open so that tells me that maybe the solenoid is burned out so i'm going to show you guys where i'm at so i'm just beginning i have to get all of this stuff out of the way here which i just kind of began working on all these brackets and that and just kind of unbolted the first one here and thought maybe well i'll do a little show and tell anyway working on taking all the bracketry apart Got myself a little container there to put all the nuts and bolts in. So, uh, two easy ones up top here, 13 millimeter, remove that bracket. Um, anything to do with the pump reservoir up top here is 13 mil, and then oddly enough, uh, for the main bracket here, goes all the way down below and bolts kind of down underneath of the valve cover, there's an 18 millimeter. Yeah, there's a little positioning pin on the bottom of there, and then there's an 18 mil 
bolt and it's in an awkward spot um, ratchet and a shallow socket you can break it free and then you just have to work it out of there it's in an awkward place I don't know I mean you can remove many things as you want you could get this uh, hose and stuff out of the way if you choose to I guess There's many things you can move but all in all we just have to open up the top here again uh, get all the wiring up high get all the coils out of out of their bolted in position there top of the valve cover and get all the bolts for the valve cover out which on the driver's side memory recalls there's a bolt in the very back not just on the sides but on the very back that is ultimately awkward to get at so anyway we're going to carry on i'll talk to you guys shortly okay so here is that 18 millimeter bolt look at the size of that i mean i guess it's got like a dowel on the end of it or something here so that you can where else that's been stripped in the past I don't know maybe that was purposely done that way by somebody that had this part before I don't remember doing it myself but as you can see there had originally been threads on there and that's quite more or less turned into a dowel so you can get it into the hole and then get the threads going it's in a real awkward spot yeah I don't know why they do that so it's down down below the bracket, down by where that hose peaks down around the corner, down there. Down below. Anyway, we got her out of there. Okay, carrying on. Okay, so you can see already, just with the removal of the uh, power steering pump reservoir, how much that opens up the access to the valve cover. Um, but now we've still got to get rid of these uh, breather PCB breather um, We've got to disconnect our wiring here and Remove all the coils along the top and get all that up, up Out of our way and then we can work on getting the valve cover unbolted Kind of dark back in there can't see a whole lot I guess Yeah, real tough to see back there I could turn my flash on, I guess. I'm not that great at this stuff, but we're going to carry on. Okay, so uh, I was going to make a note there. The the power steering reservoir can actually pull away from that, uh, that large bracket um, with three 7mm bolts. Um, one not even having to be removed, actually just loosen. But anyway, I need to get the bracket out of the way to get all this other stuff. So talk to you after. Okay, guys, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm going to get away with this repair without removing that valve cover, which is awesome, and I, uh, I don't recall this. I watched some, uh, videos on YouTube, and, uh, I don't recall anybody saying that you could actually remove the driver's side here through the, uh, you cannot see that. I'm trying to show, oh. Yeah, you can see the you can see the hole for the actuator in there and there's a uh, the little bolt right beside it and uh, so on the passenger side passenger side driver side of we have two different kind of uh, a seal going on in there so passenger side we have the seal that goes around the the VVT actuator it's quite small like quite small and uh, the driver's side, they give you this big egg-shaped guy. And uh, so well, I was able to pop that out of there real easily once getting the wiring and shit out of the way. And um, pop that seal out. This is a brand new one, actually, that came in the box with the VVT actuator. And uh, I'm just going to slip that back down in there and get that screw back in place. Uh, without dropping it inside the motor, right? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to uh, gonna carry on here and see how that goes, and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, guys, back for, I guess, the last time for this video. 
you know, brought it my way. And now we're just going over the VVT solenoid replacement on the F-150. Uh, last week I did bank number one, ran great for one whole week, and bank number two failed. And I was going to change them both, so here we go, right? Which is fine, the truck's got 256,000 kilometers. Changed both now. I did uh, the timing chains, the cam phasers, all these things. I may have even done the VVT solenoids already about 50,000 kilometers ago. Nonetheless, anyway, um, had a failure of the one. Well, I had a failure of both. It was saying that uh, I was having some timing issues with bank one. So I replaced that VVT solenoid, done away with that. And then this one was just a complete failure where it started running like hell and uh, like instantly. And so I've changed that up. Uh, just point out a couple things. Okay. Uh, so again, going over what I did here, and I don't know if this is like how everybody's doing them or not. I'm just wandering here. Um, so here's our VVT actuator that goes into the the head actually and controls oil pressure to the cam phaser, which is your variable valve valve timing so the more pressure on the cam phaser the more advanced it's going to time your engine allowing you to have that power through all acceleration curves i guess you would say so anyway i'm um, just doing the final liter of oil there i threw in uh, four and a half and i fired it and um let the filter fill up and etc and now we're just uh, dab short so i'm adding the one liter that i had as expected um so i i i'll go over this again so i uh i just got this bracket and everything so like in in play here this uh power steering pump reservoir which i'm wrestling with here we go that sits up above here uh, on a big metal bracket that bolts down below the valve cover, which is a painful one. It's an 18 mil bolt, big long one. And then another bracket on the front here with some 13 mils. And uh, last but not least, three that hold the reservoir to the bracket, which are 7 millimeter. Yeah, three of those. So anyway, um, after having... Popped my PCV line and that back on, which is just these little quick release guys. You just pull the little tab and pop the thing up. They're quite great. Never, never seen them till this Ford. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna give this thing a flash here in a minute. And um, if you guys are interested, hang tough and let's see how it goes. I'm just gonna remove my leader here, I think, and throw the throw the uh, cap back in there so uh, grab myself a rag hang tough here okay. yeah, so let's get that let's get that leader it's just been sitting in there getting the last remain oh yeah remainders out anyway so get rid of the get rid of the funnel bam gone we get rid of the oil can. Oh, let's get this on the right way. So that it sits correctly when it's tight. There we go. There we go. See how beautiful that is. full synthetic this uh, started life with um, semi-synthetic and uh, I don't know when I got it at 218 took it apart uh, you know pretty clean but I figure why not switch up to the full synthetic right so maybe that's why I lost my VVTs I don't know flushing any of the mineral debris out of there. I don't know. You guys can comment on that. Okay. Uh, hang tough here. 
Let's give this little baby a, a flash and see what happens. I'm going to try and keep you guys out there. Okay, here we go. Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is sounding just fine. Coming down on the idle now. She's smooth, man. Smooth. Okay, well I think this is pretty much going to be a wrap for the video. I'm going to tidy up and put my... Uh, air breather snorkel I guess you can call it that comes to the outside fender and I put my bracket for that reservoir back on nothing exciting but uh, so pretty much with bank one and bank two I'll put this all together as one video and hope you guys get something out of it okay thanks for visiting my way rods and restoration and of course fixing the everyday drivers. Okay. Night of break. Smooth man. I love it.